the word respect and respectful are the most misunderstood. That's why we thought we're going to make a film. Our goal really is to have an exchange that encourages cultural intelligence and empathy so that we together understand different perspectives on this word respect. And let's hold on to what is good in our culture and maybe let go a few things that may not be serving us. Respect is not only a feeling that you have when you admire someone or have a high regard for someone. At its very core, it is how we treat another person. It's really the foundation for me. It's the foundation for having deep, meaningful, positive relationships. It's, it's really that binding force, that glue that holds relationships together. And for building feelings of trust, of safety. And in Corona times, we're all talking about well-being and wellness. Well, I believe that this is one of our health insurances. If we invest in our relationships and build resilience through respect, it can definitely help us build a better world, a kinder world, a more respectful world. And it also goes a little deeper to acceptance, accepting somebody for who it is they are, regardless of their color, regardless of their race, regardless of their origin. And we as women really need to lead the way. This word respect, I struggle with a lot. And my conversation with Julia really sparked a very, very interesting conversation where we, she looked at me and said, hmm, the word respect is very interesting to me. That's what Julia said. And she took notes, I remember. And we were kind of struggling with a few words on, you know, being polite or demonstrating manners. We thought that let's try to decode this word. Let's really understand what are the different cultural nuances. Why we all think differently of the same word. We thought that we will unpick some things, what means to me, what this word means to me, to my culture and to my generation. And one of the cornerstones of Indian culture, our values and our family system is this very word respect. The concept, however, is now slowly but surely evolving just as our world is changing. Respect for the older was conformity earlier. If you listen to your elders and do as they say without opening your mouth, that was respect to them. I would be disrespectful to a colleague or my child and think that it is my right because I'm an older or it's my duty to correct my child or somebody at work. So I'm entitled to talk down on them or to treat them unkindly. And in my head, I think that I am being respectful. I work a lot with the younger generation and what does the younger generation want for them? Respect really is boundaries. They are looking for healthy conversations where they are heard, where they are understood, where their voice matters. How does respect really play out in the Indian context? And how does it really show up in our everyday action? So again, speaking from an Indian perspective only, using kind words, using words that are polite, show respect in the Indian culture accepting our differences or at least disagreeing with kind words is another form of showing respect. Using a positive tonality, a calm voice, both at home and at work, demonstrate respect. The tonality is extremely important. It's not what I say, it's how I say it. For, for Indian women, I mean, this word respect is really misplaced because we are worshipped at one end and on the other, it's just changing how women are treated at home and at work. And now the Indian woman is starting to have an assertive voice and I'm loving the change. And, and an assertive voice is a voice that stands up for herself. She speaks up for herself. She asks 
for what she wants and needs in a firm, direct, open, clear fashion. And to add to that, in a respectful manner. So let's dig a little bit into why Indian women are misunderstood. Again, if I go back to our conditioning, I go back to our parenting, we are either passive, which means that we are not trained to stand up or speak up our mind, or we push, 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 we become too aggressive. And this is how the world then views us, passive or aggressive. There is no middle path. We need to now train ourselves and our future generation on what is the effective way. What is the respectful way? It is the assertive way, having an assertive voice where I speak my mind, I express myself warmly, calmly, respectfully. And because of this, I see a lot of Western women not being so successful because they don't understand our Indian context. And we ourselves in India don't understand where is the balance, how to strike that balance because I'm not taught at school. I'm modeling my mom who then was modeling her mom and it continues. It's, it's time to kind of break that pattern starts with me being self-aware. And I am a bit sensitive, I'm making an honest confession, I'm a bit sensitive to tone of voice. So tonality hurts me. If somebody, maybe an older, speaks down on me or uses harsh tone of voice, it definitely makes my heart sink and breaks me from within. I'm guilty of the same sometimes. Our tonality is harsh, it comes across as a little rude, but in my head, I was respectful. It comes with practice. It comes with conscious effort. It comes from seeking feedback from your loved ones or people at work, because eventually we all want to be viewed or seen as respectful beings. And this feedback is essential. Your, your facial expressions say it all. Your smile has a language of its own. You cannot be the judge of whether you are being respectful or not. It's really the other. So we have to again practice empathy. We have to put ourselves in the shoes of the other, not as ourselves, but as the other, so that the other receives our assertiveness with love and respect. So going back to the beginning, how our conversations panned out between Julia and me, New ways of thinking of this word respect, which we believe is universal. And the trend to respect is now being viewed as two ways. Only when we give it, do we get it. In practice, it's deeply culturally specific. So where does the magic really lie? The magic really lies in us be understanding, be accepting and see in appreciating the different colors, forms and shapes of this word, respect. That's why we celebrate holy. Holy is again, colors of respect, acceptance, and love, it's not just simply hurling colors at each other. It's very, very symbolic and deep and meaningful. In, in the Indian context, in the Indian mythology, it is mentioned that people used to allocate this time between Holi and Diwali to set personal goals, goals to aim at bettering themselves and their relationships. It, was, it is that time of the year where we celebrate each other. We celebrate our differences. We embrace those differences. And it is a promise that we make to ourselves and each other that let's continue to throw these colors of love and respect to each other and to demonstrate more acceptance for each other. I think the world needs healing and it needs healing fast. And the only way we can do it is through our to truly accepting each other. 
and that's why this word respect has sparked this film so that it can help you me all of us be our better grander selves